Welcome back to the Robbie Gordon season mode. Just five races left in this whole series. Time really has flown by. But after the first five races in the chase, by the way, we won all five, we have a 100. The game just crashed. I can tell you what, I've never seen that happen before. That's a new one. All right, let's see if it crashes this time. I'm going to go quickly. I have a 129-point advantage because I've won... 30 out of 31 races. Dale Jr. set second in points because he's been really good in the chase run. Biffle third, Keselowski fourth, Jeff Gordon fifth, Martin Truex Jr. sixth, Dennis seventh, Jimmy Johnson eighth, Carl Edwards ninth, McMurray tenth, Marcos doing a great job, somehow made the chase, and Matt Kenseth still doing terrible in the first five chase races. He's only scored 97 points. Best man not in the chase, Kyle Busch, Travis Pastrana 20th, David Reagan 28th, and Joe Nemechek still dead last. He got 14th last time out at Charlotte. That's totally screwed up the last car point standings. Ten points separate him and Michael McC Dow and only 17 separate him and Josh Wise. I swear to God, I got to win the championship at this point before the game stops working. Okay, today's race, Talladega. We all remember the spring race. It was pretty nuts. I accidentally started a wreck that caused Juan Montoya to fly from the outside wall all the way to the infield wall coming off turn two. One thing I've noticed about the plate races in this game, the field can actually spread out quite a bit. I mean, we saw that in the second Daytona race, the July 4th race. For all we know, we could end up looking like a 1970s Talladega race in this one with the field all spread out. Let's make sure that car's set up just like you want it for qualifying. Get out on the track and see what you think. So you know the drill at this point of my super speedway adjustments because this is our fourth plate race and final one. All I do is increase all the starting air pressures on all four tires to the maximum adjustment that's to reduce rolling resistance. And I also put as much tape on the front end as it can hold because I don't intend on being in the back very much. At least I don't want to be. The car's looking good. You just need to go out there and put in a good, solid performance. Okay, today's the day, man. Let's show them boys what we got. 49.83 out of Kyle Busch. Non-chaser, but that just means he gets to go after as many wins as he wants without having to worry about points. Clipping the apron, that's not good. Okay, watch this trick. You can't go beneath the yellow line to increase your position. But that doesn't mean squat about qualifying beneath it. See how low I make those exits? All to just make this racetrack shorter. Trying to cut the 2.6 mile track into a two and a half mile. Sixth. Come on, push that pace. One more time. Here we go. Now that is a good opening lap. I was not expecting that. I know we qualified pretty good here in the spring, but I didn't think I was capable of sixth. I'm actually already going faster. Got to cut as much of this racetrack as I can. With that very shallow exit. Cross right over that separation in the banking between the apron and the racetrack. Tries to wreck the car, but it's pretty controllable. I think we might even have a pole run going. Yeah, way to take that pole. Awesome job, man. This day just keeps getting better and better. I'm on the pole for a plate race. Can't say I was expecting that. Two consecutive poles. Can't get much better than that, buddy. You really can't. Kyle Busch brings it up second. This is the second week in a row I've knocked him off the pole. At least I didn't bottom out and damage the roof this time. Dale Jr. third, uh, still keeping that pressure going for the chase. Uh, Jimmy Johnson fourth. Jeff Burton up here. He's run out of career races at this point. Truex, Kurt Busch, Trevor Bain up here. Matt Ken's a 12th. Dead last, Michael McDowell, but Joe Nemechek right there with him. And we got a really good battle for last car at this point. This is also probably the last chance for Travis Quapple to get a top 10. Just remember the basics. And give me a good, solid drive. Welcome to Talladega, Alabama for the only restrictor plate race in the chase, the Good Sam Club 500. Mike, it's kind of a wild card race. It's the Lotto 500. These guys say when you come here, you're just gambling. You've got to be lucky to get out of here with a good finish, and that's what most of these guys are going to be looking for, a good finish. Do you need a good partner, Daryl, or the right place in the pack? No fun to dance alone. Got to have somebody to dance with. These high-speed restrictor plate races are among the most unpredictable because the winner can come from deep in the pack if, as you say, he gets the right partner. 500 miles of holding your breath, ready to go at the fastest speedway on earth. Boogity, boogity, boogity. Come on, buddy, give me a shove. Let's go racing, boys and girls. Let's keep it clean today, man. Nothing crazy. Good, strong finish is all we need. Earnhardt Jr. wants to push me off the bat. And now he decides not to. Ooh, went for the fake out. That wasn't going to work. I will block people right into the wall, and if they hit the wall, I probably will too. 
Are we doing the, the weird wiggle snake thing down the back stretch? Not surprised. Earnhardt Jr. is probably upset that Robbie Gordon's become the best plate racer in the cup field. I mean, I'm sure it would have to bother somebody, probably everybody, actually going off how I've raced this whole field. Now Jr. gets the smarts enough to push. It's not going to matter because I blocked Jeff Burton there fast enough that I think I accidentally made bumper bumper contact. I, I know I definitely did right there. You see, the difference between me and Logano is we both love late blocks, but mine at least work more often. I'll admit to them sometimes backfiring, but they don't always suck. By the way, look at this field. Just, just look at this wad of traffic. That is four wide behind me. Multiple rows deep. Matt Kenseth coming to second. And, well, he was going to push me. I think I wiggled so much he got afraid of going for it. Now he wants to do it again. Connect. There it is. Me and Kenseth officially showing teamwork for the first time. And now it's over. Oh, Juan's back up here. His completely destructive flip in the spring did not take any of the fight out of him. Ha! Oh, that was a late block. Oh, folks, that was not recommended. I do not, d don't try that. So doing that has cycled Kenseth back to second. He's charging. And I'm not going to block that run. That was not going to happen. Uh, I don't know how Marcos and McMurray got a tandem going, but they got shot out of a canyon, and now McMurray instantly bails on him. Come on, man. Keep that momentum. Keep and there that we go. Momentum. Back to the lead. That's the back and forth crap you're going to be seeing all race long. Gano going way out there. Really don't know where he's going on that one. Just wandering up towards the wall. We've already lost a lot of cars out of this draft, which I bet with how fast my car is, you know, now I'm up to like pole caliber speed. Uh, I bet we're going to lose quite a few more of them. You notice Casey Kane just looked to the bottom, got up alongside me, and then just couldn't pass me. It's like late 90s plate racing now where it's like I'll come down to engineering and I'm just significantly better than everybody else, it's like Mark Martin was at uh, Talladega 97, I believe, where just, just nobody could pass him. All right, so jumping back down to the bottom because I noticed McMurray picked up a car to draft with. One thing I actually changed was I took a lot of front splitter out of this car, and that's the difference between my top 10 start in the spring and the pole that I just got in the fall is just the, the front splitter adjustment. I took pretty much all the drag I could possibly take out of this car. Uh, it's front end's fully taped up. Front splitter's the smallest adjustment you could actually get. That was a late block. So was that, which actually worked because Dennis realized if he wouldn't have lifted, everybody was going to die right there. So I appreciate that. Ooh. Yep. Got to really play them lanes. Oh, Boyer just backed off. I think I ran him so low that he didn't want to enter the first turn on the apron. Look at how many cars we've lost. We're getting to the point where I can just shake them all out of my draft. Middle lane's coming, though, pretty strong. Watch your rear. Got one behind you. The one thing I've noticed, though, about taking front end down force out of the car is that it's harder to block as effectively because there's nothing holding the front end of the track. So when I try to do my big swerve blocks, the car's a little more sluggish to try to make these maneuvers. Like that right there. That would have been far easier to do in the spring. Outside. Same with shoving Gordon into the wall right there. there. But overall, the car's just faster. And I can deal with being able to block less if it just means I'm going like five miles an hour faster by myself. Committed to blocking wherever Jeff Gordon goes here because that outside line is just not not doing anything once it forms up. Blocking the outside and yep, yep, that was really dicey. They're doing four wide for second, by the way. That was, that was a close block. I know it wasn't as close as the one I pulled on one. And he's going to the wall again. Back down. 
I don't know if that was like an attempt at a crossover. Also, where is the pack going? That's five wide. Okay, they, they got that settled down, but I've somehow already got the pack at least a little bit. They're going to catch me back, but I shouldn't be able to get these separations at all. All right, inside line with Dennis is going to catch me. It's like he's right in my draft. I know I talked about this at length at Daytona, but why is it that they can only draft off my car? I'm the only one they can actually build a run off of. And there's David Reagan. I, I just shook all those cars out of their lines to where they went three wide again. Two winners of the season run one, two with five races to go. Wow, that was a close block. Not by me, but by David Reagan. Just really having to block David all the way around this racetrack, up and down and all the way across the lanes. Now David's lost my draft, but we're up to now battling Newman. See, look at the swerving. That's not me trying to chase him all the way around the track. It's because they keep moving around in an attempt to pass, which actually just worked, but then it didn't. And now Newman just got shoved right out of the draft. All the way back to like fifth or something. Good to see Kenseth up here. Look at how little the pack exists now. There's like, what, maybe 15 cars in the lead draft and it's pretty well spread out. All right, Paul Menard, that's a pretty good run. In line with you. That was the fastest lap to 47.90. And I'm giving Marcos the drafting help right here. Still right behind you. Just skirting that apron. I don't think Travis Quapple's in this top, you know, 15 or so group. He's probably run towards the tail end. And now the outside line died because I didn't go with it. Kenseth, huge run. I, uh, yeah, I could not even block that Newman run. Just drifting right up into me. You know what? You're going to the apron for that. And yeah, yeah, I'm just faster than them by myself. You saw that. They were both to my inside with a run, and I, I just out pulled them. Kenseth with a run to my outside drawn even. Outside, He's going to have Dennis to work with though and if the Gibbs teammates can work together maybe Point something inside. will happen. Instead all I had to do was that. <laughs> and that instantly separated them. Okay not giving Dennis any drafting help because I want him to fall back and he does. 43 car up to second and that car has been absent from the front of the field this whole year. So, it's kind of good to see it. We are approaching the pit window. We're still not in it. Still with you. But we're getting there. I want to pit probably about lap 20. By the way, look at this pack of Talladega in the chase race. We're down to about six. Not going to give any of them my draft down the back stretch. David Reagan taking second. I like it. Yeah, they're side drafting. They're getting after it. Meanwhile, I'm down here hugging the WL line, running qualifying laps again. Yeah, they're having themselves a fine and dandy race back there. I'll see him later. Okay, there's still a half a second back. Amarola is in my draft, though, so that he's at least going to catch me back. Look at that. We actually have some, like, tandem stuff going on, which Dennis is not being a very good teammate because no he sided with Almarola instead of Matt. And now I'm going to be able to shake Matt out by doing that. He's going to go to the back. And then Almarola, he's going to lose my draft pretty soon, at least entering turn one, probably, if he keeps doing this high line stuff. Line there we go. He, he dropped to the bottom. He knew what to do. Carl Edwards didn't. And he still lost my draft because he was too far offset. Okay, we're down to a four-car pack in the chase race at Talladega. Very, very nice. Kenseth picks up Edwards and then decides not to. You know, I'm going to give Kenseth the draft. I think that will work. Because if I give Kenseth a draft, that will kick Edwards out. Or is there even enough cars to stay with me anymore? Have we really gotten to this, to this point where there's just no pack? I think we have. We've officially hit 1975. Yep. Doing great. Nice and steady. Yeah, I'm pulling away. Halfway is one lap from now, so that's why we actually have cars on pit road already. Yeah, the pack no longer exists. I am driving away from second place Matt Kenseth. Imagine ESPN trying to cover this. The whole booth would just have to deal with one car out front by a second, and the whole field does not have a pack anymore. Yep, there, there they go. There they go. Got to have you on pit road this lap, buddy. 
You know what? I don't think I want to pit this lap. No, we're going to go one more after this. We're going to pit the end of lap 20. We can do this all And day. we'll be fine. This is so stupid, though, how in this game, if you have a good setup, and all I did was, you know, increase tire pressure. I went for maximum grill tape and uh, also minimum adjustment on the front splitter. And now I'm just overpowered. These are, you know, basic adjustments you'd make for, you know, a qualifying run more admittedly, but, but still basic adjustments. It allows you to drive away from the pack at Talladega. All right, coming in this time. Okay, we're halfway there. Keep digging. We want to pit this lap. We need our car to be right. 10-4. All right, let's see how... A green flag pit stop goes at this place. I'm pretty good at Daytona. I forget if there was one in the spring race here. Here we come. Oh, that was conservative. Looks like you're running on empty. All right, only one stop should be needed here. Hopefully we can just make it all the way to the finish, and I wonder how I'm going to cycle out if there's going to be anybody in front of me. Way to go, boys. Nice pit stop. I don't know why I was put back on the track like that. That was not my decision. I didn't just take a hard right. It looks like I'm still the leader. I have about a six second advantage above Almirola. Now I'm not fully up to speed yet, so that's probably gonna plateau at about four seconds. And if I'm good to make it to the end on fuel, then there's just no concerns at this point. Just run qualifying laps for like the last 18. Okay, so I'm finally up to full song. Run my qualifying line right by the yellow line. I'm still gapping Almirola. And I have more than a four and a half second advantage. So this is going to be the worst race at Talladega maybe ever. Ooh, we got another car in the pits. Could we be seeing double stops? Maybe. So I have caught up to some lap traffic. I uh, can't quite tell who that is. Is that Joe Nemechek? I'm hoping if I offset to the left enough, I'm going to see his left side door number. I think that is Nemechek. And I guess he's headed to the pit. It's Nima check, and I think he is doing a double stop. Okay, that's a good strategy for last car. You want to be passed by everybody, just pit more. Amarola back to second, by the way. This could be monumental for the 43 car's point standing. Wow, this is then defending champion Brad Keselowski. What is he doing this far back? That is just strange. Must have been something early in the race got stuck in the back. I'd say this is the first race since NASCAR started using restrictor plates that everyone in the field lost the draft. That's Dave Blaney. I guess he's doing a double stop, too. And there he goes. Would you believe it? That's Nemechek again. Down another lap. My lead is easily now over seven seconds. There's a bit of a pack forming, though, with Edwards, it looks like. It seems like once you break the draft of everyone behind you, they just can't get back up into it. Now eight seconds is the margin. By the way, more cars in the pits, quite a few of them. And yes, that's Dave Blaney again. Nice and smooth. You're way out front. Using him for a speed air. boost. A bit of a slingshot. Clear right. Whoever this is probably going to wreck Travis Quapa right there. Didn't quite wreck him. Came pretty close to it. That's uh, David Gilland. Slingshot. On Quapple. And by the way, Travis Quapple is not going to get a top 10. Kurt Busch takes over second. There's Stenhouse up in front of me. I'm going to use him as a speed boost, too. Okay, there he is. You've got him. Oh, that's a solid draft. You're doing it right there, man. Nice and smooth. Up to 198. But I'm not doing any tandems in this race. I know I did some tandem work in the spring and also, especially at Daytona for the July race, but uh, the setup I'm running here is a little bit too aggressive to start doing tandems. Probably just melt the engine. Okay, five laps to go. I'm very easily good to go on fuel. More cars in the pits also. ESPN nice would be absolutely front. losing their minds there. trying to cover this race. There's just nothing to see. I'm sure that there's probably some type of cool chase storyline going on right now, like uh, maybe Kansas going forward or something, but you'd really have to do some digging to find some good storylines out of this. Keselowski being so far in the back is a storyline, but that's about it. Uh, Dennis up to second. Nine second advantage. Can we get it up to 10? I wouldn't be surprised now if Dennis pits or something stupid. Three to go. I think he might have. Dennis has pitted. Okay, then. 10-second advantage above Kurt Busch. They didn't double stop here in the spring, did they? I mean, I recall gap in the field, but they also weren't stupid. Almost 11-second lead. I bet you Kurt Busch is going to pit this time. And it looks like he has. I think we're going to lap the whole field unless hey, Harvick has stayed out. 
At least we don't have this overly stupid. I mean, it's pretty stupid as it is, but if we get to lap the whole field at a plate race, that's a true Richard Petty performance. Okay, here we come. We have a 17.2 second advantage. Uh, and we're going to take the white flag. Race is official. Make it count now. Here we go. One more time. This will probably be rated if it was a real race by the fans as the worst chase race ever held. Harvick has pitted. I mean, if we had one more lap, we could get a one lap advantage. Okay, never mind. Stewart yeah, stayed out. There. 25 second lead at Talladega, circa 2013. Robbie Gordon pulling it off. I'm telling you, fuel cell games. Ray Evernham knows what he's doing. Here we come. Almost 26 seconds now. Easiest win of my life. Great job, man. Great job. That's what it's all about right there. We'll see you in Victor Lane, man. Just stop. Just come to a complete stop. Well, that was just weird. Got the burnout going. <laughs> You're the man. <laughs> Way to go. Professional donuts. How do you think Talladega fans would like somebody starting on pole and winning by 25 seconds? You thought they were upset at Jeff Gordon for beating Dale Jr. There'd be more trash on this racetrack than has ever been seen. I mean, there would be so much trash, it'd be considered a national emergency for pollution at that point. And there we go, that's a complete lap. Now I gotta figure out what I can hit really, really hard. They're loving you for that one, man. Soak it up, man. Great job today. We got it. That's, I think, our 31st win, but the biggest whooping we ever put on a plate race. I mean, 25 plus second advantage. That's incredible. Still only two winners on the season. And we're down to just four races. Quite the victory tour if you ask me. Richard Petty ain't got anything on this team. Number one. That was a great drive and an awesome performance. So I was definitely not the fastest car in the field when it comes to one lap pace, but I was the fastest on the long run because I could run my qualifying lap almost every lap. Tony Stewart brings it up second. Carl Edwards third, one lap down. So we almost lapped the whole field. Tony Stewart was the only guy who I think didn't double stop. Matt Kenza six, pretty good finish for him. Jeff Gordon, Almarola, top 10 out of him, but not out of Travis Quapel. Dennis and Jimmy Johnson rounds out the top 10. David Reagan, 14th, Paul Menard, fastest lap. Travis Pastrana, 33rd. Here's some big news here. Greg Biffle, 36th. Martin Trex Jr., 37th. Terrible runs for them, but really still terrible for Dale Jr. because he finished 22nd. So Chase standings are going to look probably a lot different after this one. Dead last was Brad Keselowski, 43rd for the defending champion. Joe Nemechek, second to last. Why at all was Brad Keselowski's best time 1.3 seconds off the best time of David Gillen? What happened to that two car? By the way, Travis Quapple finished 39th. Definitely not a top 10. Fun fact, when an AI pushes you, this is what it looks like from the rear bumper camera. Just figured you'd like to know that. Have yourself a look. The chase standings are a lot different now. Our advantage above second is 155 points. Dale Jr. second in points, but look at the gap between him and Jeff Gordon. Gordon's closed in at just one point behind him. The drive for five continues. I think like every attempt he had at winning a fifth championship, it ain't going to work out. Greg Biffle drops to fourth in points. Dennis up to fifth. Carl Edwards up to sixth position. Jimmy Johnson up to seventh. Brad Keselowski loses four spots in the standings with a dead last place finish. Down to eighth position. Martin Truex Jr. falls down three spots. Marcos up to 10th. McMurray down to 11th. And Matt Kenseth almost going somewhere. Still last. He has a chance to finish not last, though. That's the important part. Pastrana still going in his free fall down to 21st. David Reagan still stuck right there in 28th position. Almarola picked up one spot in the championship standings up to 36th. And finally, good defense by Joe Nemechek. Finishing second to last, he's still got a pretty good advantage in last car. So anyway, that does it for today's edition of the Robbie Gordon Season Mode. Hopefully you've enjoyed it. Pretty ridiculous to see somebody just drive right away from the pack at a track like Talladega. Not a place where you're supposed to be able to do that. But at the very least, this race did really jumble up the chase standings. So don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. I've got a Patreon set up as well. Last four Robbie Gordon Season Mode editions coming up very soon, as well as the stuff that I actually have planned after this season because the end of the series is so close the uh, content i plan on releasing is going to come probably right after the last episode of this series probably about a week after the series ends sometime around there you'll see either way there's some good stuff to look forward to